<laughs> Congratulations, you made it through. You made it through another, another weekend. And this is Uncle Russ, Russ Gibb, jumping up and down on Group W Cable here in Dearborn, inviting you to uh, join us today at random. Got a great guest for you, a guy that if you got any tomatoes, you may want to throw at him, or pies, or you may want to throw him a few bouquets. Gary Warncheck, the editor of the Dearborn Press and Guide. Uh, some people claim the best newspaper in, uh, in Detro uh, Dearborn. Of course, I think Frank Bewick would have uh, another comment about that, but uh, I may, that may just be speculation. But Gary will be my guest. But before we get into that, I, uh, there's a few things that have been bothering me. As, as you notice, I, I sometimes get upset about things. By the way, I just saw Paul Streffen walk in here, and he's got a Sergeant Russ haircut, and that reminds me that reminds me that we ought to have Sergeant Russ, the Sergeant Russ, on the show. Maybe we can have him give a haircut uh, next, ne next week sometime. But Francie, could we do that? Here's my beautiful producer. Mother Gibb keeps saying, why doesn't Francie come on the television? I, I, I can't do a Scotch accent. <laughs> you know, the, the, pro the problem, the problem that I have is that uh, I don't know if the lights are on. See, they told me if I looked over there, they'd take the shot. No, no, see, that's what they told me they, in the production meeting. All I have to do is stare over there for a little, see, now they do it. I'm glad they're on their toes in the control room. Yes, John. <laughs> well, where are we? Now, we're, now we're, back, we're back at the club, and I can't do a Scottish accent. But she keeps saying she wants to see Francie on camera, and then every day that Francie comes here in the morning, you know, Francie's living in sin with that guy, that photographer guy. And so she never gets her face on early in the morning. <laughs> True? True? True, you betcha. Any, you oh, you go swimming? That's right. Oh. Every morning. See, you're following Uncle Russ. And you go swimming every morning. It's good for you. It'll make you nice and skinny. I hear you're on a new diet, too. Mm -hmm. What's your new diet? diet? What's the name of it? The seafood diet. The seafood diet. Wow. How does that work, Francie? Well, when you see food, you eat it. <laughs> When you see food, you eat it. See, I ask for that. I do that a lot on this show. You're a little crazy. You got a crew. You remember Arthur Godfrey? Remember what he did to Julius La Rosa when he got too smart? He canned him right on camera. Francie, watch yourself. But anyway, Sergeant Russ, we ought to get on, on television. Do you want to come in here, Paul? Come on, Paul. Come on, come on Paul. Step in. I want to see there. Paul is, you know, over here. Here we go. L look at the haircut on this guy. Now, see, we're going to do that. Look at the hair. You know how to bend down. It'll work. I'll, I'll stand up. I'll suck my gut in or something. Good. This is a genuine college man's haircut today, isn't it? <clears throat> yep. Yep. Even though the other people don't have them. They're getting there, though. You, what what's co uh, college you go to now, Paul? Ferris State. Ferris State. <clears throat> Paul is an ex-student of mine. And uh, now you're one year away from your broadcast engineering degree, right? Right. From Ferris State. They canceled my program because there's no future in broadcast. Is that what they said? That's what they told us. And we're dying for all the engineering technicians we can get around uh, in cable anyway, right? Yep. Okay, listen, I love the haircut. Sergeant, you went downtown? Went downtown, Livernois, Michigan. To get that haircut? Yep. Listen, is Sergeant Rush one of the great characters of, 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 uh, of Detroit? It's got to be. That's what I said. We're going to have him on the show. That's one of his haircuts. How much you charge you for that, buck? 375. 375. <clears throat> oh, see, you're not a punker. If you're a punker, if you're a hardcore punker, you get it even cheaper. It's on the weekend. Oh, on the weekend. I'll tell you, if I were a hairstylist, I'd get out of business today. That's, that's all going over for the guys. No more of the rock and roll $20 haircuts for kids. In fact, uh, the kids from Etzel Ford, the football team, they all got uh, buzz cuts. See, I'm in style. You guys have finally caught up with me. Kids from Fortson, they had Mohawks. Kid from Dearborn the other day, uh, Humitz, what's his first name? Greg, Greg Humitz walked in. He had a Sergeant Russ haircut. Everybody's going to Sergeant Russ. Think about it. What, we, we, do we have a guest today, or did I get rolling again? I got rolling again. We have a guest. Uh, we got uh, Gary Warncheck, and we'll be talking to Gary in just a, just a few minutes about the newspaper game in Dearborn and some of the good things about the Dearborn Press and Guide. And maybe we can even throw a few uh, barbs his way. Look, I'll be back right after these announcements. Okay, 
Gary Warnchuk is my guest today. He's the editor of the Press and Guide, and a very young man to have such a big responsibility for the city of Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. Mm -hmm. Correct? True. Gary, how'd a nice guy like you become an editor of a paper so young? What's the secret? Well, I started out 10 years ago with the Dearborn Guide. I was taking pictures of sporting events, freelance. A sports writer? A uh, sports photographer first. I was a photographer first, writer later. I see. And then, um, about uh, 1973, nine years ago, in fact, uh, Bill Ross at the Dearborn Guide sure. needed the some... famous Bill Ross. Yeah. He needed some people to take some freelance sports photo uh, sports photos. And Are I you nervous? That. Yeah, I'm scared. Don't be don't be nervous. Russ, if I you shot want a drink? If I shot an obscenity, will you cut this? Yeah, you do a, do an obscenity. But this is cable. I heard you could listen. Some people cable. think your paper is an obscenity. Who said that? Well, I, look, I got a letter here from somebody complaining that you're not covering a lot of the local news that you should be covering. Yeah. It says local press. It doesn't pull out your newspaper well, specifically. I appreciate that. But it says that, uh, how come these guys aren't covering the uh, the school committee thing? You know, the uh, the merging of the districts, and there may be some uh, merging going on with the Dearborn district yeah. and There's Crestwood. Mm -hmm. How come you're not covering well, we're that? covering that, in fact. Uh, well, the guy says you didn't look well, right, right here. Never mind. Never mind who it is. Yeah. You want to nail him later. All right. Well, we're covering that. Uh, the hearings are mainly in Dearborn Heights, and uh, our paper, the Dearborn Heights Leader, is covering that out there, and we're running the stories from the leader. Oh, I see. So you actually have two editors? Is no, there no, a different editor? No, in no, the no I'm the editorial director of both papers. I see. We have a managing editor. And then Hank Henry is the, the publisher of, is the publisher of, of that boss. newspaper. But we got off the track. You start out as a photographer, and then you became a writer? Yeah, I started writing sports part-time around uh, November of 73, and then a year later, they needed a sports editor. Why didn't I? Why didn't I recognize you when you became an editor? I don't know. It nope. seemed to me I, nope I heard you your name, but I didn't associate you with your. Were you big and fat one time? Well, yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> at one point in my life, I was 50 pounds heavier than I am now. You're kidding. Yeah. That's why I didn't recognize yeah. you. What's well, your secret? We ought to talk about diets. People diets. love diets. Oh, sure. Everybody's diet. Uh, deep in Francie's on a diet over there. Everybody's on a diet. Yeah. She's. A, I heard her comment. You heard it too. A little joke on right, the fish. Yeah. <clears throat> Why am I nervous? They're making jokes like that. No, no. You, know, you look great. Oh, I tell you, you look great. But let's talk about the, uh, the, the, the pressing guy a little bit. You became the, uh, the editorial director, was that it? Mm -hmm. The pressing guy and Dear One Heights leader. That's what your title is now. Right. But before that, you were a writer. Mm -hmm. Sports? I was a sports writer uh, through 78. Then I got on the news beat, City Hall beat, as news editor. Mm -hmm. and then became editor of the Dearborn Press and Guide. And then a year ago, we consolidated some of our operations in Dearborn Heights, and I took over directorship of both editorial products. You Dearborn boy? Yes. From what schools? The other, West End High School. Etzel Ford? Yes. Ah, now it's out, folks. The reason. You know one complaint I get about your paper? Some people think it's the best paper in Dearborn. Mm -hmm. I, I hear that, and I know you lot won a lot of awards. Mm -hmm. In fact, your photographer, Millard... Barry is super. Outstanding. I, I mean, I don't know how you keep him. I, I'm, I'm amazed that the Detroit News and the Free Press hasn't spirited that guy away from you. You don't want, you don't want a word on that. Keep that down. Super. Always action. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to try and get Milton on, uh, uh, on the show here. Good luck catching him. Is he a hard guy to get? He's sort unique. of a phantom. Very unique personality. He covers rock and roll, sports, dog shows. Or He's always on the scene of an accident. Does he have a police radio? In well, this yeah, he has a... Because I'm amazed at how he gets there so rapidly. Everybody is. But uh, y your paper has won a lot of awards. In fact, this year, as I recall, there were four. Mm -hmm. Were there four press awards? Yeah. What were they? Two for photography, one for a spot news photo of first place, and uh, I think he got a second place for a feature photo. Mm -hmm. Then we won first place for an, a package on surrogate motherhood, the issue that Noel Keene's involved. We've got to get Noel Keene. Yes, we're going to try and get him. And we got a third place. We're going to get Maureen on, too. Oh. Good idea. I called her yesterday trying to get a hold of her, but she was over with the mayor, Mayor Hubbard, mm -hmm. over at the hospital. And we got a third place award for our coverage of the uh, mayoral election last year between Maureen Keene and Jack O'Reilly. And that's in the Michigan Press. Michigan, Michigan Press Association. Yeah. So that's that's quite an honor for mm -hmm. one paper mm -hmm. in, in a We're town this size. How many subscribers basically do you do you service? Mm -hmm. Do you think is that a, is that twenty thousand plus? Twenty thousand. We're audited plus. by. Yeah. When a person buys a newspaper, more than one person reads it, though, right? Certainly. I mean, normally if it comes into a family, you get sure. two or three readers. So <laughs> your readership probably is what? 50,000 50, readers. 50,000 people. Yeah, a, yeah. Do you get a lot of flack in Dearborn? Sure. 
I mean, when you when you write a story, when you have that many readers, you're you know you're always going to displease somebody. And how do you handle that? <sighs> Trade secrets. Uh, I know a couple times you put stories in. One thing you guys like to do whenever you talk about me, you call me controversial. Mm -hmm. Last time you had a comment in your column. Is it called around town? City life. City life. And uh, you said I was cranky. Mm -hmm. Anybody disagree? <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Uh, and I remember I was really upset one time that you did something. I forget what it was, but I was really upset, and I came storming into your office. Mm -hmm. and, uh, How did I handle that, Russ? We just smiled. You, you asked me if I wanted a cup of coffee. That's my trade secret. Is that yeah. the, 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 give the guy the coffee? Mm -hmm. what, what do most people complain about on a newspaper? Well, mostly it's that they're not being covered. Uh, their particular interests are not being covered. For instance? For instance, as I'm sure you like to lead into, uh, Dearborn High Sports. Uh, yeah, I, I think you guys are totally biased against Dearborn High. I think you got a built-in, you're very pro Etzel. I mean, uh, it's embarrassing. In fact, I've written a letter about two years ago uh, addressing that to your, which you published, by the way. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, I, I, I think you uh, tend to show uh, any time that Etzel Ford does something. And they're great teams. I don't want to take away from Etzel Ford because, my goodness gracious, you know, they're a top football team. They're certainly uh, a fine school. And I have students in Dearborn High from Etzel. As, as you know, we, the students move around, right. and there's some fine, fine people there. But I just think it's out of balance. Is your sports editor from Etzel? Did he graduate from yeah, Etzel? Yeah, he's an Etzel Ford grad also. Where did Miller graduate from? Somewhere in the deep south. I oh, he's not from <laughs> Etzel Ford, okay. And uh, what about... No other uh, Etzel Ford products. And, in staff. But you. But then I am. Yeah. Well, even the headings sometimes are very pro. Uh, Etzel, Etzel Ford, it seems to me. Well, I think it goes in this order. You cover Etzel really well, Divine Child really well, then Fortson, mm -hmm. and then I think what's left, you give it to uh, Dearborn High. And I don't think that's fair. Well, you're concentrating on sports now, of course. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well, then you should have my sports editor on for one thing. And for another I'd thing. probably hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I was in sports for a long time, and Russ, I hear this every school from time to time thinks that the other schools are getting better coverage. The West End schools complain that the East End gets too much coverage, vice versa. Etzel says Dearborn gets too much, Dearborn says Etzel gets too much. You come from a Dearborn High perspective and that's, you know, that's how you feel. But I'm a graduate of Fortune too, so you hit me in two places. Oh, well. I wish I were smart enough and fortunate enough to have graduated from Etzel. That wasn't my luck. See? <laughs> and so now I have to suffer reading your newspaper where you're, Russ, where you're Russ, banging Russ. them all the time. Oh. But listen, <laughs> you, you mentioned on something that that concerns me a great deal in our town. Mm -hmm. Dearborn, uh, people perceive that we're a divided city. Mm -hmm. What's your perception? I, my perception is that that's the, the perception that... Uh, are we divided in the sense, is there definitely an East Dearborn mentality and a West Dearborn mentality, and maybe even a South Dearborn mentality? Well, I don't think you can blanket the city by saying everybody in the East End has a West End and vice versa mentality, but... Uh, yeah, I think you still have the perception there. Mostly, uh, I think, with the people who have been here longer. Now, what do you mean? The, the citizens that have lived here right. all people their lives? Right, people who have lived here all their lives, and maybe in the past there was more of a divided nature. But because we're a strange city. Mm -hmm. Most cities grow in the middle, out. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford, the king, mm -hmm. had all the land in the middle, and we, the uh, serfs, <laughs> pretty heavy stuff here, we, were all, we grew up around the outside. Mm -hmm. And so we were sort of separated uh, right. on this great circle of things. That's changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. My perception is that as the city tends to grow toward the core now, which so. is really a unique advantage to our town. Mm -hmm. Politically, what do you think is going on in our town now? You're a very all astute right. observer of the political processes here in Dearborn. What do you think is going I, I, on? I think there is far too much speculation on who's going to be our next mayor. Mm -hmm. Um, I've heard you discuss that on the show, who's going to be the next mayor, and at this point, it's too early to talk about things like that. Let's get on with running the city as, as it should be run now. Is, is the city being that? run well in your, in your mind? I think so. I think so. It's a very difficult job. It's like, it's difficult pleasing 50,000 readers. It's uh, difficult pleasing 85,000 constituents all the time, but I think it's being run well. Does the city, do, do politicians ever come down on you? Like I come down on the sport thing. Do they come down and say you're not being fair oh, to me sure, politically? Oh, sure, sure. I've had a running dialogue with Doug Thomas for years and years before he was even a, 
on the city council. What's your perception of Doug Thomas now? As, Doug as Thomas, a person? as a person, um, you were surprised when you had him yeah. on the show that he was very articulate, and uh, you thought he'd be this radio I, madman. Well, and that's because reading the local newspapers. I would read his letters to the editor mm -hmm. and then comments that people would make about him. I thought he was some kind of monster. He turned out to be pretty decent. Well, he's, I think he's a fine guy. I think he's a, he can't be negative about everything, though. Why do we have phantom people in government? Hardly anyone outside of people in the media know mm -hmm. Dwayne Jackson. Hardly anyone knows Dan McCormick. Uh, hardly anyone knows uh, Dr. Archer. In the sense of powers in this town, mm -hmm. why, why hasn't the press brought this to the fore? I mean, the news pe people uh, in, in this town. Well, I think they get plenty of uh, play. Uh, I'll bet you if we ask the people that are viewing right now, how many of them knew who uh, uh, Dr. Uh, can't think, my brain is falling apart. Dr. Archer? Dr. Archer. They, they, they wouldn't be able to. They probably wouldn't even maybe pick them out of a crowd. You know, they wouldn't even know what he looks like. Is that, is that the way that the city wants it? Well, that's... Or is that the way you guys want it? No, that's got nothing to do with that. It's they, uh, they have a job to do, and they're doing it. I mean, it's, not everybody can be in the forefront. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think your perceptions of who's in power positions right now may be a little dated. Because okay. Tell me, who do you think Who do you think are the, the, the power brokers, as it were, in our town right now? Power people in town? Yeah. Well, I think Jack O'Reilly has uh, surrounded himself with a lot of those people. Mm -hmm. Who By the way, I like Jack O'Reilly as a mayor. I think he's a good mm -hmm. mayor. But a lot of people really come down on him. Did you support him? In yes, the yeah. I had his sign up. As far as the power people in town, um, you know, you get into that. You can define what's power. Uh, is, it, is it definitely in government or is it in uh, the business sector? You know, that's a very well, vague who, area. Well, who are they, though? I mean, politically, who are the most powerful people outside of Jack O'Reilly? Now, name me some names. Who do you think? All right, I'll, I'll name Dwayne Jackson. I think Dwayne, Dwayne Jackson, Jackson has a lot. Yet I think a lot of people uh, think of him as a real phantom. I don't think they could pick him out of a crowd, and yet he's very influential in this town. Mm -hmm. The name Dwayne Jackson. In fact, I think that Thomas and some of the people that support Doug would like to make Dwayne Jackson an issue. Is it, do you think that's a fair perception? Sure. Uh, Thomas has made that an issue for a long time about the Jackson's department, not just Jackson the individual, but the city having a so-called public relations department to get its its viewpoints out, where the opposition hasn't had such an advantage. How many uh, how many people in that department do you, do you know? No, I don't know. It's been consolidated with uh, Citizens Resources, and it's. Uh, do you take a lot of their press releases verbatim in your newspaper? I mean, well, sure. I mean, how controversial can you get when they say there's going to be a crap show at Esper Library? I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think we have to worry about uh, propaganda from the O'Reilly administration in that regard. It, any straight news that comes out of City Hall, we write. If we get a press release on it, we, uh, we get the uh, additional facts on it and we rewrite it. Do you think your paper practices a form of censorship by omission? You know, by not putting some news in. I don't think so. Because, uh, you know, you're in a very powerful position in our town. <laughs> and the stories scary. that you cover and you don't cover mm -hmm. can be... Uh, I've always felt that newspapers and people like myself in the media tend to, tend to put the negative stories up front. And very seldom do we put the positive stories. We say it's not news. People aren't interested. For mm -hmm. instance, the Detroit News this morning had a head about we now have 16% unemployment mm -hmm. in the state. Uh, Take 16 from 100, what is that? I, I met 84. 84 percent of our people are working. You see? Mm -hmm. That's a positive thing. 84 percent mm -hmm. of 100 percent are, are employed. That's a good sign. And yet what, we always take news? the negative. Is it well, news? What's news? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I think news is what you fellas determine it is. Mm -hmm. And I think you do. Uh, That's a heavy responsibility too, but... Yeah, I yeah. think you guys do. You can make or break a person by how you present them. I mean, your cartoons, when you, when you want to dig at somebody with your cartoon, you, you can make them look like a fool. When you call me cranky, <laughs> when you call me cranky, uh -huh. you're doing a number on me. I'm not cranky. I'm one of the nicest guys there is. Is that clear? Okay, okay. Fancy, get me a tap. <laughs> Give me an eyebrow pencil. <laughs> now you're letting all the trade secrets. Oh. I'm not letting all your sorry, trade sorry. secrets. The eyebrow pencil. Yes, you're right. I, want, I want an eyebrow pencil. <laughs> The truth is out. Gib wants an eyebrow. Russ, isn't it true that if your name's mentioned in a newspaper, whether it's good or bad, it's still publicity? You keep calling me Gibbs. I never, I never <laughs> call you Gibbs. No, no. I'm 
I've heard that so many times. I'm kidding you, of course. <laughs> Tell me about the newspaper. What's the future of it here? You're going electronic? Uh, well, we have to examine all the possibilities. Certainly cable is a new force in Dearborn. And, we want to and you're a news gathering service. It would seem mm -hmm. to me that uh, if, I were, if I were Gary uh, Warnchek or I were Frank Bewick, I'd be, I'd be doing everything I could to uh, get on cable, to Where's have it? our own local news. So we have the Tell News mm -hmm. now. Tell Team News. Tell right. Team News. And, but it would seem to me that you fellas have the news gathering mm -hmm. uh, operation. It would seem a very logical progression that you would start doing a television newscast. Well, we're examining all possibilities. Are you, are you looking right into now? that? We're looking at So the future is here. Well, you may be on camera before long, eh? <sighs> but so then there'll always be columnists like Gibb or commentators who can yell and scream when you guys aren't doing a good You're job. You're very critical of the media. Oh, I am. Very I, I, don't think, I don't think we know the word responsibility, and I include myself in You've that. been part of the media for a long time. Exactly. And I'm, I'm ashamed of some of the things that we do in the media. <laughs> Gary, I think that too many people in the media today practice advocacy journalism, meaning they take a stance and then they slant the stories to prove their point. I think the anti-nuke people are a classic example of that. I think the anti-power people are a classic example, mm -hmm. the environmentalists. I, w I was watching the Canadian television last night and they were talking about acid rain. That's the new hip thing mm -hmm. in environmental. And a couple of their top experts are saying, it's totally overrated mm -hmm. that from a very scientific, cool point of view, acid rain is not the issue that the media is building up, but the media mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah, I think we are, we are, I am critical of the media. I don't think that enough of us understand the meaning of the word responsibility. And again, I'm including myself in that. It's so easy to get on camera and rant and rave sure. and, and criticize. It's so difficult for us to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Are you going to come back again so we can continue sure. this? If I keep doing this on and on, I'll get less and less nervous. and I'll be You're very calm now. I am. I am. You see, it didn't even hurt, did it? Well, I felt like shouting obscenity after the opening, though, so you'd have to cut and I could... Uh, do you print obscenities in the newspaper? No, sometimes. Sometimes, uh, damn no, no. hell. Well, damn in hell. That's uh, that's that's become part of the culture, today. I think. But uh, listen, after you watch the movies on cable, you'll be able to print all the dirty words. Have you watched any more movies? <laughs> well, some, yeah. Yeah, they get pretty wild. No, of course, you go to the movie, they're pretty wild. True. Gary Warnchek, thank you for being my guest. Thanks for having. And uh, I enjoy your newspaper. Thank it's you. It's a good very much. paper. It's well done. Thanks. Hey, uh, this is Uncle Russ, and I'm going to be back right after this or these announcements. Gary Warnchek, young man with a lot of responsibility in our town. By the way, if you'd like uh, to comment or if you have some questions for my guests or some suggestions for guests, I suggest you just write me here, Russ Gibb at Random, Group W Cable, in Dearborn, Michigan, and uh, we'll... Uh, We'll try and get the guests that you want to have appear on the show. Hey, for those of you that took the time to view the show, I want to say thank you very, very much. For those of you that took the time to write the letters and the cards, I want to say thank you. But most of all, I'd like to thank you for just being you. Russ Gibb, Ed Randall.